cold heart's journey. It turned out to be simple, but it wasn't fucking easy. <clears throat> Introduction. I can't remember a time I could not feel a call on my heart. As I sit and ponder over the course of my life, what set me on the path I chose when I was very young and impressionable? It is easy to see and leaves me in awe of the mystery of life. A sense of the majestic comes over me as I sense from the five decades I have experienced how simple it is. I understood and grasped it from my earliest consciousness. It was hidden deeply in the fabric of space that silence which lies between each beat of my heart. I was born in the year of the Merry Monkey with the zodiac sign of the Gemini Twins. <clears throat> Regulus, the brightest star in the constellation Leo, the kingly star as it's defined, was in the heart of the lion on June 11th, 1968 at 12.30 p.m. I joined the Nature Clan, according to my elders and brothers, Cater Brown and Maladoma Somme, to whom I dedicate this book. Without their help, when they arrived, this story would never have been lived and could never have been told. In it, we are one in purpose, the whole community of individuals seeking to find a rite of passage, deeply hidden among the tall standing ones, firmly connected to Mother Earth on Vision Quest. We are all one in our fellowship of travels as we all journey toward a more promising land where the living dwell. It is apparent to the more than casual seeker what that last paragraph means. The significance certain facts surrounding our lives can hold. A deeper dive into my origin there tells this story. The time of my arrival and purpose were of a royal kingly order, which was going to require the courage or heart of the lion, the antics of the monkey, the ingenuity of a pair of twins with the magic of all nature to support and ultimately bring about the success and fulfillment of the purpose, calling, and destiny for which I was born, even as all nature works together for the good of all that is. It feels now, looking back in hindsight, this calling on my heart has been the only guide I have had all along my journey. I've questioned it, gone my own way time and again over the course of my life, but the calling was always there showing me the way. I needed to go, whether I went to the right or to the left. It was always a word in my ear saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Even when I felt I had gone so far from it, there was no way I'd ever make the journey back to where I last saw the light and knew my feet were on solid ground and the right path. This manuscript is my record of the journey my feet have traveled, the lessons I've learned, the losses I've suffered, the consistent pull on my heart in a certain direction no matter the circumstances I was in. The call was always ever present. At times it has been a nagging background noise I wasn't really hearing in the mixture of noise I had surrounding me in my life. I was, it was the silence you feel when the electricity goes off and all the humming and background noise suddenly cease. The silence is tangible for a few brief seconds. That underlying silence is what the call on my heart is likened to. That brief space when everything stops. To understand that space in silence, 
which comes so rarely and we continually avoid as humans, is the very place by which we find freedom because therein lies outer space. It is my prayer that by sharing the experience, strength, faith, and hope and love I have found on my brief sojourn and journey through this life, someone will find in the vast vaults of his story, lived out within my life, a fresh perspective that can be gained by other pilgrims on the journey of a soul. I have found my feet traveling. Journey of the soul. Life is a journey of the sacred soul. Where is it? How do we know? Life is a journey of the sacred soul. The butterfly in its safe cocoon must find out how to leave its room. It must break free and find out how. As with the soul, it must find a wormhole. It must travel it to the end till it can begin again. Over and over the process goes until finally it is a rose, like the butterfly from its safe haven into the sky like the raven, soaring above this place called earth, full of joy and mirth. Free from the bondage of time and space, of gravity into grace. A journey we have all embarked on. Sometimes we walk, sometimes we run, sometimes we lay down and cry. Other times we just seem to fly. This journey is sacred indeed, and we will succeed. Where, oh where, does the journey go? Into each sacred soul. Georgia at Musket, February 28th, 2007. That was a few years before I vision quested and was given a new name. Another part of the story. Chapter one. The importance of new beginnings. I don't have the usual childhood memories of frolicking fun, lots of family or friends. My memories of my young life are few and far between when it comes to most things. I have flashbacks which I'll leave for the part of the story where they came to me, as the surrounding circumstances are significant to why I remembered. Most of the memories I have are with two significant influences, my grandmother and our elderly neighbor, Mr. Morton. I spent many weekends at my grandmother's house learning about Jesus, going to Sunday school, and being cared for in a way no one else did in my family at home. Grandma was always present with gentle words of encouragement and comfort. Never did she speak harsh words, which pierced the sensitive soul of a child. Though my grandfather often did. She read me Bible stories, helped me memorize Bible passages, loved me unconditionally, and was always a strong tower to which I ran often when very young, less often as I got older, <clears throat> but always we were close. I moved far away after a few brief attempts to establish life close to home right out of high school. I have a few of the letters she wrote me after I fled from Indiana on a pilgrim journey, because in those days we had to write with pencil and paper, since long distance calls were 30 cents a minute or more depending on where you called. Mr. Morton, on the other hand, was in his late 70s or early 80s. He and his wife Nellie never had any children, so he was always happy to see me from the very first visit when I was four or five and wandered across the old country road in Chesterfield, Indiana, where the first 10 years of my life were lived. I can still see us sitting in his, old, his chair together in my mind. I sat next to him because I was so small and we both could sit in his recliner together. There we watched football and basketball. We sat a card table up 
and played war, penny ante poker, and many other games I learned lessons from. I occupied hours, days, weeks, and months over the years only after that first excursion when I won his heart because when he invited me in his kitchen, I immediately began pretending to serve him as a waitress in the restaurant would. I poured him coffee from his pot, wiped his table, washed his cup, and had the time of my life until my parents finally missed me, which brought them looking. When they found Little Red Riding Hood in the neighbor's house, I can imagine how upset and scared they were and why they began reprimanding me for intruding and bothering them. He came to my defense, told me of our lovely time, told them of our lovely time, how I had served him, and he said she is welcome here whenever she wants to come, if it is all right with you. He also sat me on his back door steps by the kitchen before we left and paid me the first 50 cents I ever earned. I still have that 50 cent piece today because it meant so much to be appreciated that much. From then on, I had free reign with Mr. Morton to role play, have deep conversations, and be educated and guided, though Mrs. Morton never cared to participate in our, in our antics. I was forever his sweetie pie. Those are the days of old. The most vivid memories are the times I was with either of these two elders who raised me in a way my parents were not able due to their immaturity. I understand now, after four children, the importance of what they did for my character development in a home where my early developmental needs were unmet. These early years are paramount to the ultimate outcome of a life. Without stability, security, structure, consistency, emotional support, love, education, and positive role models, a child cannot develop into a well-rounded, balanced, and stable adult. They spend the remainder of their lives struggling to grow up and many never fully mature because the opportunity for a community to encircle an individual and actively participate in the soul development rarely happens in an individual's adult life. Most often they reproduce a more degraded version of what their role models modeled for them while young. And so our society in America, especially where there is no culture, community with a strong sense of how to direct and to grow mature individuals crumbles before our very eyes and everyone seems clueless as to why or how to deal with it.